Hello, welcome to my amateur hobby book binding tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make typesets in Google Docs. It's free, which is why I like it. This tutorial is specifically for fan fiction typesets, but the same principles apply to any other typeset you're going to make. This is a typeset that I made recently um, for a friend, and so I'm going to show you how I did it, how you can do it too. start go in Google Docs I have all of my setup done for me so a lot of times I will just make a copy and start a new page that way so I don't have to do page setup but that's something you can do later so start with a brand new Google Docs um, and you're gonna set up your page so go to page setup under file you see pages whole document and we're gonna change paper size I print on letter and so half of that is going to be statement 5.5 by 8.5 so I'm going to click on that um, and then you can do your margins you can set them how you like um, for really for a lot longer fix and fictions I will often just do 0.5 on all of them 0.7 is another good option just kind of determine what you want so have that set up and you should have a new format there okay so I went over to AO3. This is a fan fiction I typeset recently for a friend. Uh, so find whatever you want, click entire work, and then go to download, and you're going to want to download it as HTML. I'm going to open that over here so I can close that out. Um, then I'm hitting Control A to highlight everything, Control C to copy. And we're going over to our untitled document and um, control V or paste. Okay, once it's all loaded, it should look something like this. Um, and so I control A, select everything again. And I'm going to go in and we're, I'm going to do a line first. So I justify everything. Okay, it's all justified. So then I'm going to come into the spacing and I do custom spacing. Um, 1.15 is good, 1.26. Sometimes if it's a lot longer, I might just do like single spacing. We're just going to leave it at 1.15 and see how that is. There's a lot of paragraph spacing after each paragraph. Here, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, all of these spaces in between. That's fine if you're reading it online, but if you're reading it in a book, you don't want that. So let's come back over here to custom spacing, and I'm just going to make those zero, and you'll see how it changes it. But you see how it all disappeared. Um, so in order to keep it as separate paragraphs, we're now going to insert, um, oh no, format, my bad, and go over to align and indent, and then indentation options. So you need to make that zero and zero, and you go over to special indent, which will be first line. I do 0.3. And that will indent the first line of every single paragraph over 0.3. Okay, and you can see how I did that, which will make it a lot easier to read online. Um, next, I I'm gonna pick my font size, which let's see, what did I do over here? Um, I did 10.5. Okay, 10.5 is a pretty good for this. is a really long one, so 10 or 10.5 is good. Um, if you're doing a shorter one to typeset, 11 or 11 and a half, sometimes even 12 works. Okay, why is this not working? 10.5. Enter. And so it just kind of depends on how long you want to make this. I want this to be able to fit in one book itself. And so I am doing 10.5 once this loads. There we go. I also do Garamond. Is that how you say it? Garamond? Medium. That's my preferred. Um, I looked up something or someone had shared something with me about um, fonts that were taking less ink to print. And Garamond was a one that everyone likes to do. So 
anyway, so it should all be in there now. It should have all of these, the italics, everything should be the same for that. So now that that is all set up, I'm going to show you how I set up my front matter, which is what it is. Um, so first page, I always just have the title and then I will set up this stuff. Um, this is all the information about it that comes from AO3 and then a beautiful title page. And okay, so I kind of just pick what I want for this, but first I'm going to insert a page break and this is going to move everything else to the next page. So I don't have to just press enter a bunch of times. So this is the only thing on this page. So let's see, what did I do? I just kind of want it to look because I don't remember what I did. It was like size 49. Cool. Um, but I'll usually just make it big or something like that. And then I'm going to, this is the part that you're just making it pretty, but when you open it, you'll just see like this at the beginning of your book. This, um, this is the front matter stuff. I'll just highlight all the way down past the summary. And then you just want to get rid of the underline. So underline and then uh, change all the color to black. And then here I go to format and align indent. And I'm going to take off that first line indentation because I don't want it just on this section. And then you can decide what you want to keep. I like keeping this. I keep the rating. I don't keep the warnings. Um, and this is all just personal preference, what you want to keep. Um, I like to keep the fandom, I keep the relationships, I don't really keep characters. Again, personal preference, just decide what you want. Um, language, I take off collections. I typically keep these stats. I don't really want to keep chapters, but maybe I do. Um, I like to move the title and the author up to the top. And then I put my, let's see. So typically I will, I mean, this again, it's just personal preference, but I like to move this over. I like to bold that and then space. Um, I also bold, I'm just doing control B to bold all of the beginning. Just make it easier for it to read. Bold, 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 bold. Um, here we go. Oh, I guess I don't need that there because it's already at the top. Um, and then I keep the summary. I like summaries. Again, this is just for you. If you want to share it with anybody else, that's fine. But this is just for you. This is a fan fiction one. Whatever you want. Um, and here's the summary. I don't typically keep author's notes. Or warnings. I've read this. Okay, so we're just going to insert another page break. Just move that stuff to the next page so that this can all be by itself. I'm just going to view this at 50% so I can see where it is on the page. I like to move it down the page, something like that. So you have this. I'll have that on that page. Um, and then after this page I have, let's see, we'll move to this page, which we will insert another page break. It'll go, there we go. So keep in mind that, so this is page one, and so it is going to be on the right-hand side of your book, page two, so this will be the back of this page. And so looking at this, this page, I want a, oops, Let's, can I not? Okay, let's go back. What is happening? Okay, we're here. Okay, decorative title page. That's more for me to know. So what I'm going through, I'm not like, oh, what's this random building page? So I know I need to put my decorative title page stuff in here. And then, um, and then the back of the decorative title page. 
I usually leave blank. Um, so, so usually I do a decorative search. title page and then a blank page, um, and then I might do a quote and then another blank page, uh, page break. But this one has specific things. So we're going to actually make this my quote page. It just kind of depends on if you want it to the left hand side or the right hand side. But this is part one. There's like three parts. And so I have a specific. Um, I don't know, maybe this wasn't the best book to show you how to do this, but that's okay. So um, anyway, but before chapter one, I know that I want a section break because that's going to affect our headers and our footers. So I'm going to go ahead and just insert a section break. Um, usually this takes a little bit for it to load. So while that's loading, I'm going to show you how I created decorative stuff. Um, I'm jumping around a lot, so if there are any questions, just let me know in the comments, but hopefully I'll get through it all. Um, so I use Canva. Um, I have a Canva Pro account. I pay for it now. I didn't use to. Um, I have used this for many, many years. I think I learned about it in college, and but now I, I pay for it. And But there are lots of really good things that you can do in it without a paid subscription. But all of the things that I'm using in here are from the paid. Anyway, so... I went ahead and designed things in here. So like this is um, my dingbat, which I'll get to that. I use this to do my decorative title page. So like these are all just things that I put on and figured out where I wanted. Um, this you can change like transparency or whatnot so that it's like behind. And then since there are different parts, I created its own like part one, part two, part three. This is like my, my quote book, quote page, my gosh. And then I made a decorative like title. This is what I wanted. But I sized my page to be the exact size. See, this is folio. I sized it to be the exact size that my document is. Yeah, it's still loading. Um, so it's a 5.5 by 8.5 inches. And that way I know when I insert it, it can take up the whole page. So I'm not going to show you how I decorated this. Maybe I'll do another tutorial at some point. But this is... This is what I did. I already downloaded it. So we'll come over here. Oh, okay. Let's start inserting stuff in the front matter and then I can feel like I can focus on everything else. So front page, and this is going to be the back of it. I have here, let's insert this image, upload from computer. I have this. This is my, hey, I typeset this that I use. Um, you don't have to. This is what I like to do. I'm going to put it behind the text. And then I'm going to click Fixed Position on Page. And then something like that. And because my words are covering it, I'm going to go back up. So it'll look like this. You want it behind the text because there's white stuff. I, this is another thing I created in Canva and downloaded. And then uh, if you fix the position on the page, it won't get caught up in your header and footer. But it does mean if you like add extra pages or anything like that, that this will stay on this page. And so you'll have to come and manually do that, which is important because it'll come into issues later. So decorative title page. I do this if I'm going to go and create it and then come back, but I have it done. So let's insert it now. Sometimes I do it before, sometimes I do it after. And oops, let's fix that. Let's just add another, where is it, page break. I accidentally deleted it. It just creates another page. So insert image, upload from computer, and this is my decorative title page. So I just downloaded these from Canva. Let's make these bigger so I can see what I'm working with. Here we go. Open. So behind text, actually, I guess this can be on top of text. It doesn't matter. There's no text here. Um, so I'm going to show you what happens if we don't move with text. There's even, there's not even a header or footer to insert. Oops. Control C. I'll, I'll, show, I'll show that part later once it. we actually have headers and footers. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, it's mildly finicky to make sure it doesn't like completely disappear, but I mean, this is how I make sure that it fits on the page is because this is the same size as this, and so I know that it's going to fit. So hopefully that makes sense. And I have this really pretty front page. Anyway, so the back of this, I did a quote page. So, um, you don't need a quote page. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just leave it blank, but this one is fancy. 
Um, so let's insert the quote page I made. Image, upload from computer. Beautiful quote page. See, I didn't do my, my things, and that's why I was causing problems. So, in front of text, fix it on the page. It's going to stay directly on this page. Make it the page. Ta -da! Beautiful. Okay. And if you're concerned about if it's back or front, we are now on page 5, which is odd number, which is going to be on the right side of the page. So, um, this chapter one, but it's part one. There's three parts and I wanted this to go before. So I maybe I should have picked a different typeset to do, but this is what we got. So not all things will be like this. This one is. Anyways, this is part one. So I guess everyone could learn stuff from this, I guess. Sorry. Um, see, I made that too high and so it disappeared. It's mildly finicky, but this is what I like to do. So but then also because I know it's going to be the right size, I can make sure everything matches. Okay, so part one, and then, because it's on the right side, I want a blank page behind it. Let's just check, make sure this has... Yep, it's got a blank page behind it before it goes to chapter one. So, so my cursor's on there, so I'm going to insert a page break. So, blank page, and then we're going to start chapter one. So, recap. I've got this thing. Oh my gosh, this is like a half title page. It just has the title. And then we've got all of this AO3 information, my decorative title page, I have a quote page, and then I have part one and then a blank page. So this is going to start on page seven, which will start on the right hand side. Let me show you some other examples of front matter so that you don't get super confused. Okay. Here is an example. This is a smaller size, so the paper looks smaller. So for example, I have a, this is the half title page. This is all the information about it on the back side of that. And then I start with a decorative title page that I made in Canva, and then it goes straight into the typeset. This, I just have to happen to have pictures with this typeset. So that's an example of how simple the front matter could be. Here's another one. I don't think I finished this one, but the, the what is this called? The half title page. I am really bad with technical terms, this is why I'm amateur, but you know, uh, half title page, all this front matter, decorative title page that I have yet to put in, I'm still working on this one, and then the back of that I have to put this here, and then I start in chapter one. So it does not have to be that complex. Um, let's see, what did, I, what did I do for this one? Half title page, that goes on the back, my decorative title page, all this front matter stuff. I think it's because my thing wouldn't go here because this is another quarto. Um, it's a smaller size, which I can do in a different tutorial. And then I have quotes and then again, pictures in. anyway, so there are lots of different ways. This one, yeah, this one is a lyric book that I made. So you can set it up how you want. It does not have to follow. I just happened to pick a book that apparently goes weird, uh, with the part one. So anyway, the whole point, anyway, front matter, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't know what I'm saying. This is, yeah, you set it up how you want. Just remember front side, back side. So now we're here. And remember, yeah, this has, we already did a section break in front of it. I'm going to jump into headers and footers now with page numbers before we do anything else. So let's see, how did I do it in here? I do them lots of different ways. I did headers. Okay. This is actually my favorite way to do it. So Oh, look at that. Okay, this is section three, section two, section two, section one. Okay, so I'm that means I have a page break, in, or not page break, a section break in between these. Did I mean to? No. Did I? Yes, apparently. Um, you're going to want to do section breaks in between, or in front of, in between, oh my gosh, before each chapter starts. Wow, I am, my words are not wording today. Anyway, so. You can either click on it and apparently get it, or you can go to insert, and then we're going to go to headers and footers, and we're going to insert a header. So let's go to options first, header format. So we're going to do 
whole document. I want different odd and even pages. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that means it's going to come up right up next to my text block, which I don't like to. Since I have my text block, my text page, oh, I should not be talking. Anyway, my margins are 0 0.5, so I want to go a little less. So we're going to do 0.4. If they were 0.7, if they were 1, I might do, like if they're 1, I might do 0.7 or 0.8. If they are 0.7 margins, anyway, just make it slightly smaller so it's not right up next to the text. So whole document, different odd and even. So what this is going to do is create odd and even page headers. I feel like that was self-explanatory. Yes. Okay. So I want to unlink to previous. I do not want it to have the same as up here because I do not want page numbers on those. Unlink. So section three should just be the only next section because I haven't done any other thing. So we're also going to do a different first page because I do not want, okay, unlink and different first page. I don't want page numbers on my first page like this. There's nothing on here, but it's on the next one. I just want a decorative title. So different first page, unlink it. So now we are going to do options. Um, let me just double check. Yeah, different first page. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so options, page numbers. All right, I'm gonna do this section forward. Header, don't show on first page. And we're gonna start at one and apply. And let's see what happens. It should, yep, it doesn't show there, and it does show here. So we're going to edit this. Okay, this is an even page. It is going to be on the left side. So we are going to move this over to the left side. Here, let's zoom in. We do not need to be this far out. Beautiful. Okay, two, and then you can do whatever you want. Let's see. I do author's name over here. Is this in dreams? Uh, yes. Okay, just zoom in. In dreams. Beautiful. Okay. This is the way I do a lot of my titles. You do not have to. Um, and then I make them a little bit smaller than my font. So I think this was 10.5. So let's go to like an 8. It doesn't need to be a lot smaller, but I don't want it to stand out. I also typically use the same font that I use in my typeset. Sometimes I can do a fancier one. I think this one, I did a fancier one. Which one did I do? Actually, I think I, let's see. It's been a while since I've done this. Right here, that one looks great. Looks like it's gonna match. Yep, I will do a little bit more. Lovely. So there's that. It's not there. And now I need to go over here and edit this one. So on this side, you have the name of the book. And we want it to be exactly like the other one. So I think I did nine. I think I changed it to nine. We're going to change the font. Lovely. Now we have, yep, so there's nothing there. And I just like to come up and double check. Yep, nothing is on these. And this should continue all the way down. Beautiful. So OK, now let's insert our chapter titles. What you can do is if you don't like to do what I did, where I made ones like this. You don't have to do this. This is personal preference. I do this for a lot and you don't have to do it. I think there's some where I, you just highlight and say I wanted to do, let's see, what's something pretty that cannot come from Canva. Say I wanted to do that and then let's see, let's make it bigger like a 36 and on that side 
have it go down. This one doesn't have chapter names. It just has chapter, like chapter one, chapter two. So that's why I decided to do it that way. But you could do it like this. That would be perfectly fine. You just have to make sure that it's... So if I were going to do something like this, I would update heading two to match. And then when I went through through each thing, I didn't have to go back and manually do, oh, 36, this font, this, this. On the right-hand side, I would just go in and do apply heading two. Anyway, but I'm not. I am doing... Uh, insert image because I made pretty things over here which I'm not going to show you how I made it because it's that can be a different thing lovely okay see how as soon as I inserted it it moved down to page two so we're going to move this behind the text it has white on it so if I put it on top it will just cover it so we don't want it in front we want it behind also because this part's going to go behind. So click behind text. That should move everything up. Lovely. And I also don't want this. Here, I'll show you how. If, if I move, we'll do move with text. And I'll show you why I don't do that. Let's see. See, I'm trying to move it up so that it can take up the whole page. It gets in the header, which is why I don't do move with text. So control Z, let's cancel that. I don't want it to get in the header. So we're going to fix position on page. I'm just going to zoom out so I can zoom on page. And then we're going to make this take up the whole page. Because remember, I sized it how I wanted it in Canva already. See, it can go all the way to the top now because it's fixed on the page. Okay. There we go. And this way, it makes sure... Oh, gosh. This way, I can make sure that all of my chapter titles will line up. So I think what I did when I was actually doing this... Is I just went in and I edited this chapter two and then I downloaded this one and so on and so forth and there's like 52 chapters this took me a while but I'm spending a lot of time on this <laughs> so this is beautiful okay I so what you can do is you can go and just do all of the chapters first if you want find the next chapter wherever it is insert it but just make sure you do a section break before and then do your title thing. I like to do everything all at once kind of thing. This in between here, you need what's called a dingbat. So I'm gonna erase that. Down two, I like to keep three in between. We're gonna insert a dingbat. Uh, you can do uh, a special character if you wanted to put something. It's just gonna be the symbol in between. So like if you wanted that. This one's great, oh, not right there. But like, then you can kind of get it exactly where you want it. I like to do images. Again, from Canva. Canva is my best friend, which is why I pay for it now. So I have this crown. It's lovely. I'm inserting it in here at some point. Obviously, it's large. So take my image, and I'm going to crop it so that I can move it more easily. Find it. There we go. Oh, not that. I want to change this to shape. I think I just want to change. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now it's cropped. And. No, that's wrong. I did. I want it. Okay, yeah, I just want it in line like that. And I want it. You don't want to do the fixed position on page. I did that once. That was so dumb. You Because then if I edit anything later, it moves with everything. So you want it to move with the text. So that, for some reason, yeah, I decided to do that, which you wouldn't. But, you know, you, you fix things up above. This is going to stay in between. So this will cre create some separation. So I just kind of skim through. Oh, here's another one. And actually what I do once I have it as the size that I want, I will copy. And oftentimes I have another doc open. It's called my typesetting doc. It's I go through my, my list of things that I'm supposed to be doing. And I'll just copy and paste it in there. Also, it must be like 2.4. It's like the middle. But I will copy and paste this into a separate doc. And so then I could just, if I leave and come back. So I'm going to copy that. 
I guess I can show it instead of just doing control C, but copy. Then we go down. Oh, here's another one. Backspace, one, two. I like to have three, it just keeps it even. And then I just paste it in. Let's scroll down. And oh, look at this. Here's another one. And I am just going through the entire fic to put these in. So I'm, because I already did this, I'm not going to do it again. But let's go down until we see another chapter. Where's the next chapter? Chapter three. Well, where's chapter two? This is why I like to go line by line because I know that I'm going to miss it. Or not line by line, but enough. Here it is. Okay. So a lot of times there will be end notes. There are none at the end of this. Let's see. Are there any at the end of chapter two? Where's chapter three? Haha, -ha, here we go. See, chapter three. See, chapter end notes are at the end. So I delete those. There are certain fix that I will keep them because I really enjoy them. But that's a... I'm just going to delete that. So now that I'm here, at the beginning of each chapter, you need to insert a section break. Okay, so this is a new section. We deleted the last part of that. Okay, so every time I create a new chapter, I'm going to click into the header. I'm going to keep it linked to previous because I want to keep, I'm not changing the titles for each chapter. I want them to stay the same, but I want a different first page because I don't want it page numbers on my, with my decorative title. You don't typically have page numbers in the header on the first page of a chapter. See, but it continues on to the next. So let's delete the chapter notes. I don't want those. Let's delete that. And then we would insert the next thing. I did not, I didn't copy it out, which is totally fine. So I'm not actually gonna do it, but that's what I would do for the rest of this is I would go through, delete the end notes, delete the next notes, insert section break before each chapter, and then change the header. Also at the end, there's a lot of stuff at the end. I will delete that. A lot of times they say, they'll say the end. So I'll just kind of make this bigger. Actually, let's just do it this way. Just kind of completes it. Beautiful. And now we're pretending that we're done with this. When you're done, it looks like this. Let's go this. Oh, I did change the font because this was a newspaper article. You don't have to. It's all personal preference, but that's what... Look at that. We typeset a fix. We type something. I don't know. I can't talk. Look at that. We type said something. Um, yeah, this one's not done, so I'm not going to show you that. This is a quarto I did. You can also insert, I insert lots of images and this, these are my dingbats. For this one I did, this one I want to show you because I did header up here, where I did the author's name and then the title. And then because this is smaller books, I like having my page numbers at the bottom. This is not set up so that you can uh, print into signatures. So you need a signature imposer for that. This is what I use. It is free. It is great. I will link this uh, below so that you guys can see it. So uh, let me show you how to do this. So we are going to uh, download as a PDF. Okay, so we're back over here. Input file, choose our file, download, here we go. That's my PDF in there. Generate files. I'm going to do the aggregated only. I don't want them as individual signatures. Some people do. I will just print them all at once. No modification. Paper size. I am printing on letter. Uh, printer type. If you do single sided, it will show up as a odd page file and an even page file. I just do duplex because sometimes I use a duplex printer and sometimes I will just manually tell my printer to do odd and even prints. Style folio because that's the size paper that we did. We did half size. If you're doing a quarto, you would use a different size 
up here, but we did 5.5 by 8.5. So folio, and ignore all this, don't do that. Standard signature, eight's pretty good. Standard's pretty, eight is pretty standard for a folio. If you're doing a quarto, I do like three or four. Um, ignore all this. That's just an extra page it's gonna add. It's fine. So this is 500, oh, oh yeah, that's right. 592 pages. It'll be 148 sheets of paper, 19 signatures. This is how many are in each signature. So eight pages that you would fold together. And when you generate the PDF output, um, I'll show you how that looks. This is the PDF output for it. So it, you can tell it is signatured. It is quote unquote out of order but it's really because it's just going to print back and front and so that you have your signatures all in order. So now it'll be ready to print. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions about typesetting in Google Docs for fan fiction. I will probably do another tutorial for non-fan fiction. Anyway, this was great. Again, let me know if you have questions.